Hey everyone, so we're into week one of Hashtag Blessed and over the next six weeks we're going to take this um, whole subject about what does it look like to live the blessed life and um, in fact more importantly what does the Bible say about living um, the blessed life. Our culture is saturated with notions, ideas, um, input on what it should be to, to be blessed and the reality is we all want to be blessed right. We, we, you know, we want to know what it is to be blessed, we want to know what it is I hope to bless others as well and so we're going to take some time out and look at what does this kind of whole blessed life look like and for us it really revolves around the whole subject of giving. Um, but giving is much more than money. I think we reduce giving to money, but actually giving is so much more than that. So we're going to explore what that looks like for us over these few weeks um, together. Jesus said in Luke 6 verse 38, he says, give and it will be given back to you. In fact, he goes on, he says, press down, shaken together and running over. The measure with which you give is the measure with which you'll receive. Amazing verses and like we're all like, yeah, I'm up for that. Give and it will be given to me. We love that. <clears throat> the context of those verses in Luke chapter 6 is actually about three things. It's not the three things we think it is, um, but it's about judgment, condemnation, and forgiveness. Give judgment and judgment will come back to you. Give condemnation, condemnation will come back to you. Give forgiveness and forgiveness will come back to you. But actually, when we think about Luke chapter 6, we often think it's about money. Well, why is that? Well, it's because the principle of give and it will be given back to you actually applies in so many different areas of our lives. Think about marriage. Give and it will be given back to you. Think about your employment and your place of work. Give and it will be given back to you. The principle of giving and receiving, sowing and reaping applies on so many different levels in every single one of our lives. And the same is true with money. Give and it will be given back to you. The measure with which you give, it will be given back to you. Actually, one of the kind of pitfalls of some of this language is we make the, the, the kind of the, our motivation for giving to be all about getting. But actually, it's about the reward. It's about the reward of receiving something, not the motivation. If I give, I'm going to get back. But actually, the way that God set this up is when we give generously and when we give with a joyful heart and with the right heart, there is something in that that we then receive this reward that God brings us. It's about being blessed and God blesses us. There's um, some amazing verses that we see on, uh, on giving and the right heart. And in Deuteronomy chapter 15, uh, we see just an amazing story that I'm, I'm not going to go into. You can go read it for yourself, Deuteronomy 15. But there are four principles that are in those verses um, that we can apply to our lives and some things that we kind of need to work on in our own lives in order to become this kind of joy-filled giving people. The first one is we, we need to deal with a selfish heart. You, actually, what happens with selfishness is selfishness can prevent us from giving. It, it stops us. You, you don't need me to tell you that we're all born selfish people. I don't have to train my kids or disciple my kids to be selfish kids. You know, there's they, something naturally inherent within, within humanity that causes themselves to be selfish. And the reality is if we want to be givers and joyful givers, we have to deal with a selfish heart. The second thing we have to, we have to deal with is we have to um, deal with a, a grieving heart. Selfishness can prevent us from giving, but actually we can grieve after we've given something. What do I mean? Like if you give to someone and then you spend the next few weeks kind of contemplating what you could have spent your money on if you had not given them that money, it's a grieving heart. And actually grieving can really attack us. Grief can really attack us when we give. But we're called to give joyfully and cheerfully, not actually with a sense of grief or selfishness. So those are some things we need to deal with in order that we can develop a generous heart. God is so generous. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world, he gave, Jesus is who he gave us. What an incredible gift. And it's about us living with that same lifestyle of generosity where we love to give generously to others. And then we also need to develop a heart of gratitude remembering where we've come from, remembering how much God has brought us through some things and we give out of that place of gratitude that we who have received much give much. Why? Because we are full of gratitude. But it's about our heart. How we give starts with our heart. You know, God, God is not just after your money. He's after your heart. But in order to get to your heart, sometimes he has to go after your money. Where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The reason Jesus wants us to look so much at the whole area of money is because so much of our, our heart and our treasure is, is, is around our money. But Jesus wants to invest our treasure into the kingdom of God. When we invest our treasure into the kingdom of God, our heart is there also. 
I hope you are blessed as we kind of just look at this series over the next six weeks and kind of just go on this journey of what does it look like to not only live the blessed life, but to be people of generosity.